Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at a game, a good old game that is I think a couple of years old by now. It is called Warhammer 40k Gladius Relic and it is sort of a colonization slash civilization strategy game. I have had the pleasure to play it about 20-30 minutes by now and got a bit of a feel about it and it is really a replayable kind of customizable game where you go up uh, with a faction of your choice against another faction of your choice i'm sure there are a couple of dlcs out there but i'm playing the latest version without the dlcs at the moment grabbed it for a few bucks and wanted to introduce it this will be kind of a shorter series where we're Maybe having 10, 15 episodes of that Let's Play. And where we're uh, just going to explore if this uh, game might be something that you'd be interested in. As always, if you enjoy the content and want to see more of this specific game, make sure that you let me know about it. Because then I can create content according to that. So, if we are going into the game, uh, we do have the option between uh, Astra Militarium, which is the broad forces of uh, the Emperor... Um, that will be a hard uh, rating and although I'm drawn to them I would uh, want to rather play with a different faction this time this could be something for another playthrough then there is easy mode aka Necrons uh, an ancient faction in Warhammer 40k uh, that traded their bodily shells for these machines in order uh, to live uh, for an extended almost infinite period so we can, could fight against them or fight with them then there are of course orcs and there's no such thing as enough daka aka enough guns that the orcs have a very chaotic uh, faction but also very fa um, uh, fun one and then of course kind of uh, the fan favorite uh, the uh, marines in this case uh, the ultramarines um, i think we're just going with space marines because it's fun to play with space marines maybe in a in a future run we're going to take a little bit of a harder um, of a harder challenge difficulty uh, the standard i think is easy but uh, mummy ain't raised no soy boy so we're not going to play on easy i am tempted to go like really hard the problem is with strategy games unlike tactical games where i can just outsmart the ai Strategy games very much depend on game knowledge, so the harder difficulties are not necessarily just harder, but you are required to actually know what you are doing. So I think we're just going to start with very hard, which I think is already sizable, sizable harder than anything else. Word size uh, medium, land mass medium, game pay standard that looks fine. We have quests, uh, no uh, random duplicate faction, no turn timer. I think that we'll just leave that as is. I have no idea. I have no idea whether or not that is good or not. And whom are we going to fight against? I mean, we could do a two versus two, where we're basically with um, Astra Milesium uh, fighting against uh, the two orc factions. Or are we going to do a classic one on one? Let's keep it basic for now. And. I want to fight orcs, uh, so we're going to fight against the orc boys. Um, team B is good. Select difficulty. Small loyalty, advantage giving, boss, moderate loyalty and level advantage given. Large loyalty and advantage given. Prophet of Gork and Mork. Extreme loyalty. So we've gone into very hard. And this guy is boss. Oh, it looks for a first playthrough, blind playthrough, that might be stretching it, but we're still going to go in. All right, so let's get this going. We're the blue guys, they are the red guys. Easy peasy, let's jump into the game. Gladius Prime was a bastion of humanity, newly colonized. A suitable base for our chapter to rebuild and recruit. We space marines raised our fortress here. Grew strong again. But the 
York invasion brought a warp storm that cut off our Emperor's light. And the dread Necrons crawled from the earth beneath our feet. War was on all sides, yet we are the Emperor's chosen. We do not dread the dark or quail at the relics of old. Terror is for those who oppose us. We know no fear. Good. We landed on a barren planet. So, a couple of things just uh, going through the menu. On the bottom right, you have our mini map. So, we landed at the top right ish corner of the map. We start with two units. Uh, let's take a good look at uh, these bad boys as uh, they are Space Marines. We got two, that's uh, not even a chapter, the two small squadrons of Space Marines. And just to talk about uh, the idea of this game. So the idea of this game is we're, we are supposed to deploy our city, which is orbitally um, just placed down here. And then we're going to expand and eventually we'll need to eradicate that nasty, nasty orc invasion. So we do have a couple of uh, things going for us. You can see that every single tile has a couple of different bonuses associated to it. Uh, we do have requisition, which is generally the bonus to keep a higher army. We have energy, which is generally the bonus to, uh, or the resource to keep all of the buildings. We do have a certain amount of research and we do have influence, which is a resource for champions and relics, uh, which are unique items that a champion uh, could, uh, could uh, uh, carry. Additionally, each of these units, you can see I have a couple of stats. Let's just shortly go through that. Armor is basically the mitigation that a unit has. The more armor it has, the more the enemy needs to have penetration. Generally, uh, the Space Marines have 66% armor damage reduction, which is great, and 33% uh, ranged damage reduction. So they are quite tanky. 15 hit points, 8 morale. Uh, the moment that it becomes uh, below two-thirds of the morale, they become shaken, and uh, below 33%, they become broken, and broken typically also then withers at some point. Um, these Space Marines can perform one action, so one attack, and can move three tiles plus after a certain amount of experience, so with three experience points. Uh, they would uh, generate a further level upon a level they increase in hit points and also 55% damage so relatively straightforward we're going into the kind of fight um, fight portions of the game in a second first of all we need to deploy our city so this is one option for our city deployment which would be nice because you can see it has a lot of green ish tiles there for um, for larger armies. Keep in mind these tiles it cannot be used so uh, these two unfortunately are not good but down here we would have a lot of extra in, um, influence aka the, um, the purple resource so we might want to think about doing that. So let's try to place our city down here. Bam! There we go. With placing the city here, we also claimed one of those resources. You can see there are a couple of uh, tiles uh, that have uh, those shaded outlines. You need to claim them by uh, going there with a uh, with a unit, and then they're basically yours. The moment that they are claimed, they will produce something. In this case, this is a trader's encampment. A trader's encampments allow uh, to purchase um, uh, items for heroes very very powerful and that in in return uh, would allow them to equip themselves also it generates more influence so there are a couple of uh, those around here uh, this here on the other hand is a volcanic outpost for more um, energy and it also produces energy energy in my limited experience is not as valuable of a resource as the others so couple of things 
we discovered a necrom tomb deep beneath the um, initial path of the land lies a tomb city where necrons have slept away millions uh, more uh, long millennia not millions but long millennia uh, to one who knows the correct protocols it's a simple matter of beginning the procedure to awaken them and um, yeah then they would uh, be awakened from their uh, slumber shard of vault uh, has been discovered before the warp stone uh, when men ruled the planet these great outcorps were uh, a curiosity and an attraction like Hadia's pylons yet whilst the warp stone rages overhead they tremble with an unkind power that foolhardly raises a may seek to tap so you can see um, shard of vault good gives you a lot of uh, resources but I don't know where exactly they are wire wheat um, is uh, the the problem with wire wheat is these are these little things here wire wheat you don't want to be um, on wire wheat as it typically costs your unit quite a bit of health and will kill some of the space marines so we don't want that we have also found the Jacaero uh, trader encampment which is what I just talked about uh, creates a little bit extra biomass uh, also creates uh, influence which we need lots thereof and finally we got our big fat city throne of the old ones is what it is called currently one out of six so let's go into the city there are a couple of things that we can do but before we can really do something we need to acquire tiles and uh, therein already lies the first um, challenge we want to get a building that produces infantry so we want to go onto a tile with a big fat um, infantry production bonus so we're taking that tile first uh, it now takes two turns then we can start building stuff on the tile and we're good to go also if we're if we're capturing this tile here as part of our city we don't need to build on it but we essentially get uh, sweet sweet influence bonuses so far so good let's do a couple of other things shall we so for starters i would um, want to introduce you to a further feature which is uh, the fortress of redemption and that one will be an interesting one as we're first exploring where the other resources are there's a volcanic resource up here and you can see those um, orangish lines which indicate that you can't like move over there unless you do have a flying unit so that it's never ba a bad idea to have kind of a bit of defense in between here so you can shoot over them but you cannot move over them so yeah now i will show you the second action which is the fortress of redemption costs nothing at the beginning but two upkeep of influence and if you're placing it right next to a resource what's going to happen is it automatically claims said resource so this one here is uh, now claimed for us and we're producing more energy as you can see plus anyone who is coming through this valley or wants to come through here needs to deal with the fortress of redemption additionally we're moving to that other shard of wall outpost which we want to get i want to claim as much of the map as possible at the beginning and we already found a couple of things namely web way uh, web way gates so these are warp gates that have now been corrupted and chaos units uh, such like uh, the ones down here their speed uh, side wings they are not chaos units they are just local inhabitants uh, that will get mercilessly slaughtered over time but anyways um, there are couple of chaos units that will spawn over time so what we're going to do is we're attacking it um, let's talk shortly about the attack mechanic uh, space marines deal more damage when they are directly adjacent due to their bolter guns but they can shoot two uh, fields and you can always see on the left hand side right here um, the prediction of how much damage they are going to deal so currently we're attacking the webway gate you can do that after you have moved good final stuff there is a lot of research and by a lot i mean you do have like tons of research available 
so much so that it is unlikely that we're going to get all of the research done. One of the research that worked for me the last time quite well is the frag grenade, which gives, gives a lot of uh, the units an extra attack option with a cooldown, typically dealing way more damage than their normal attack. So we're going to start with that. So webway discovered, which is galactic uh, tapestry of shimmering strands. These Aldari uh, webways are now fallen to the chaos. And we found Vespeeds, which are these little creatures. Lightning speed, dropping from their neutron blasters, emitting bolts of translucent fire. Each shot shimmers. They do have moderate armor, as you can see. They are quite healthy, but have low morale, but are fast and uh, that's pretty much it. I have a couple of neutron blasters that deal a lot of damage and can jump uh, freely. So those are neutral units, in case you're wondering. We are ending our turn. So it is entirely possible that they are just coming in here and are trying to attack us. Good. First objective. Deploy a fortress of redemption next to a special resource. Since I knew already from my 15 minutes of playing that that would be the first one, we have immediately succeeded on that quest, which is why the game gives us a further quest. Um, we now need to generate 20 requisition per turn. Currently it's 10. So this is the, this resource and we want to have a bit more of it. Good. We're taking that extra spot here and the webway gate is almost dead we ran into a trap and yeah we're just going to fight back with the marines they will need help what i did not mention is that wonderful fortress of redemption can get shots as well and as you can see the moment that you kill something everybody gets experience talked about um, uh, level up so you can be up to level 10 uh, these here now have one out of three experience because they were near the kill you just need to be near the kill you don't need to do the level below um, but both of uh, the space marines now got a little bit more experience good we attacked we attacked uh, here and these space marines need help the brothers should help each other And as you can see, we're taking quite a bit of damage. Good. City has extended its reach. So we're now creating the first um, production building. Costs us two upkeep, but will allow us to increase infantry. Well, on the other hand, what we could do is we could actually fulfill the quest and start first with a, uh, a refactory which is the standard building that allows us to to uh, to simply generate more requisition which we are going to start with so that'll take four turns uh, lots and lots of time in the meantime We're going slightly back, still going to hit them. And I'm going to show you the Overwatch mechanic. Uh, these guys are could attack, but only would deal 1.5 points of damage. Uh, keep in mind also that they are, you can see it, uh, you can see it on top of them, or shift, shift to keep visible, there you go. They are Imperial uh, runes, which gives them another uh, dam damage reduction. So they currently have the better ground, and as we learned, uh, you never want to fight against creatures that have the superior ground so i'm hoping that they will move up and that i can show you a, a bit of overwatch so we're going to overwatch here it's a passive action the moment that uh, they do anything we will take shots city could theoretically also take shots but that um that requires the vespids to come a little bit closer Good, and turn. There was the overwatch. Good. 
Good, now we're moving closer and you can see now finally we're dealing 5.8 points of damage. And if we're continuing, we would even deal more damage, almost killing them. Let's try this. And you can see more enemies uh, that are uh, showing up. This time, wild hounds. They are quite easy to dispatch, but they unfortunately uh, deal a lot of damage in melee and can walk quite far. However, our Fortress of Redemption has a huge range and starts shooting. The Fortress of Redemption only has a, gu a gun mounted on it. So, like here, twin uh, laser cannon. Deals a lot of damage, but only sh uh, mm, shoots really well against heavy units. So anything that is armored really take a lot of damage. Uh, the non-armored uh, creatures, however, will not. Our main castle would have both a twin link laser cannon as well as a bolt gun but for whatever reason this uh, little bugger here is not inside good you can see lots and lots of wolves that are coming up i will show you something uh, another mechanic which is moving in to cargo so the Space Marines now are protected here and we will hold the position until healed so you can heal every single unit can fully heal up even if they have been uh, almost decimated. Problem down here is we were trying to follow up and uh, kill the Vespids but it did not work out. We've lost our one resource and we're just fighting against a lot of stupid random creatures um, the the vespids uh, that that were injured made their way back so that is continues to be a problem but for now we're just needing to survive and not losing any of our space marines so i'm being careful to keep them alive all right end of turn uh, we're we're now definitely in a in a difficult spot. We don't want to lose uh, the Space Marines, so move into here as far away as possible. They cannot take the resource as long as we do have a Fortress of Redemption nearby. So that's the good news. Unfortunately, the bad news is there are way too many Vespids down here for us to deal with at the moment. So brothers need to regenerate some health and we need to dug, dig in and just accept the situation for now. As you can see, we are highly, highly damaged so space marines are going back and are healing up they have certainly beaten us handily on the other side you can see we are now have a refactory and are gaining quite a bit of a requisition not 20 yet but quite a bit good Let's claim another spot, or alternatively, let's build the Apothecarium, which we can build in the center. You can uh, see little building slots. This one here is three, this one here has two. So as the city grows, we can uh, basically place um, little resource tiles um, here and there. So that is helpful. I think one more turn. Oh no, we already got uh, the research. So let me show you something else. You can now see we have the holy hand grenade, frag hand grenades that uh, can be used. They will deal more damage specifically against unarmored or lightly armored targets. And a lot of the beginning targets are unarmored or lightly armored. Good, we're going with the reclusium next. It's a building that produces heroes as well as generates influence. 
and that will be helpful because uh, we definitely need stronger units space marines are fine but boy oh boy we're getting really really pounded here Good. Our main city is being on uh, is under attack. Luckily for us, uh, the throne of the old ones is good in defending itself. You can see, just dealt 5.7 points of damage, and one of our space marines almost ready. Again, 12 out of 15 hit points. So time to use the holy hand grenade, which would deal less damage in this case. Oh, because they are in the woods. I see. They are almost dead. Unfortunately, we only have one action, as, as you know, so you can't throw the hand grenade on top of uh, on top of attacking. Uh, let me just reduce the action animation a bit. I might have been a bit too generous with uh, quick an animations. Good. Uh, the other space marines are slowly healing. You can see three out of 15 hit points and as the hit points go down also the number of models goes down. So they currently only have four attacks instead of five. Can't believe the wildlife is so dangerous at the beginning. It must be due to the higher difficulty. I could kill him with the last marine, but I'd rather want them to regain hit points. Good, I think one more round of regaining hit points here is helpful. Both of the marines should be full. And yeah, we're requiring a bit of help down here but only one more turn and we get the help that we need good marines are moving up uh, 9.5 that would be a full kill appreciate that can now see another 1.1 experience on them so let's hover over that's 2.1 out of 3 experience so we're almost level 3 uh, level 2 in the meantime we're still building that apothecarian which is the building that we need for further space marines and more space marines means bigger army Good. We've also grown to three out of six population, so it's good. I think the 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 apothecarium also increases the population by one. Let's get this one here recaptured. Moving out here, eating a big fat Overwatch. We attack them normally, that's 4.7. If we throw the grenades, that's 6.0. Very nice, so grenades are already starting to shine. Uh, but no fire support of the city, that is unfortunate. I am thinking about re... Well, I have a better idea. I can see an unexplored resource there. So let's do this. Bam! Grab the resource. Oh, oh, okay, that is interesting. So a couple of things. Number one, this is fermentation pool. So more population growth, which is great. And also more um, reclusion, which is very, very good. Secondly, we got our first enemy bastion, but I think we can't reach that. Not sure though. 
This is essentially just like our Bastion, Fortress of Redemption, one that a neutral entity has put in here. So it needs to be removed. And there is a nice little outpost option here for extra energy. Okay, cool. Well, things are starting to look up again. Like it. Um, if I haven't mentioned it yet, also the buildings start to regenerate over time. So you can see uh, this one here is now in hold position until healed and then you simply can regenerate them. Good, and I think we're okay for now. Imperial Bastion, quite tough. Fermentation pool is good. Food, biomass, a lot of growth. It's generally a, a very good uh, spot. And the tower isn't bad either because it helps to defend this area. Very hard to even get, uh, get to. And it can shoot into all of these fields. Actually a really decent position uh, for the fortress. I didn't even know that this was a coastline, but it, for the coastline it is definitely a good one. Taking more damage as expected. We're a focus firing. 2.5 damage and 3.5 if we're continuing. Um, I would say we're, we are, and we are putting ourselves adjacent to them to make it harder for them to just move away. Unfortunately, can't hit them. Good, nothing here, but there are a lot of um, Imperial runes. Some of the Imperial runes shine, like the one up here, which is a holy site. And in those holy sites, you typically find artifacts. So that's a cool one uh, for some extra loot. But currently, we just don't have the manpower to actually do all of that. End of turn. <sighs> they sliver away. Good, the reclusion happened, which you can see the city is now three out of seven. I like that. What I don't like is these guys still have overwatch after moving. They are really fast, but I will not let you get away. Not this time. There we go. The city finally uh, can shoot there. And yeah, we got experience, as you can see. Two out of three experience. Cool. That's good. Back into the city. Uh, first of all, we need new research. We got the reclusium, which is good. And let's get ourselves. Armory wouldn't be bad because that allows us to generate a couple of vehicles. Frag grenade isn't bad either. It's a second hand grenade uh, that is against more armor targets, if we so desire to do that. But I think I will go for another hero, a chaplain, because heroes, in my experience, are fabulous. Good, a couple of new things. We can now produce infantry. In six turns, we get one additional infantry. You can see they cost 40 and they cost upkeep. So uh, with them, more, with, with a uh, larger army, we also will need to pay more upkeep. Um, we definitely need to create a reclusium. And the question that I'm asking myself is, um, where? No, that is more production. So we need to get a new tile. One. I like to first of all claim this for for more uh, influence, and then claim this here afterwards. So you can see you can queue uh, the claiming. Uh, this is a special tile because uh, this is a trader. 
you cannot develop the tile, but it will give you bonuses. In this case, 20% more um, influence. And we need a lot of influence for, uh, for the heroes. But the heroes are so worth it. And we're essentially building another tile over here for the reclusium. And then the next idea would be this building here, Assimilarium, which further increases influence. So we're going to play the influence game. Slowly moving over. Good. Um, let's take the Webway Gate first, and then we're going to take the Imperial Bastion. Uh, we can't, can't move the Fortress of Redemption, but it can shoot quite far, and you will see that it will very much handle these things. In the meantime, we're regenerating our other Space Marines, and that's pretty much a good cliffhanger for a first episode. We have liberated a few um, resources up here. I think it's fair to say that we want to go further and push here. Equally, we would want to push there. So we started uh, re realistically kind of in the middle on the right-hand side. And the orc potentially starts on the middle on the left-hand side. So I really want to get the top and the bottom captured soon. And the way that we're going to do that is via champions, via heroes. And the heroes are really strong. I don't know if they are like really good units later, but for now, my experience is they are quite good, so we're going to give them a try. Anyways, if you enjoyed what you have seen, then leave a comment and a like down below for more Warhammer content. This definitely is a neat little gem of a game, and I already get the kind of Space Marine itch uh, in here when playing it. So let's see if our brothers can uh, survive on this very hostile environment. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.